everyone! We've been doing a bunch of vocabulary enhancing sessions. Now, increasing your vocab has so many advantages. It improves reading comprehension and you will be able to un uh, better understand novels and movies. You will also be able to communicate and really express yourself better. So, a robust vocabulary improves all areas of communication. Listening, speaking, reading and writing. And today, we're going to discuss some words that we commonly use and how we can replace them with synonyms that are more specific to what you wish to say. Now, replace these basic words with better ones and level up your language. Using more descriptive words can help you convey a clearer and more specific meaning and can really add depth and interest to your writing. Let's start with good. The movie was good, the food is good, I had a good time, such good weather. Ah, oh, have you been using too much good for everything? Well, there are better words that can express the same with greater accuracy. So instead of good, you could use words like excellent, exceptional, outstanding and superb. For example, the movie was excellent or the food was exceptional. Next up, bad. Just like good has been overused for you know positive emotions, bad is also used for overused for negative emotions. So instead of bad, you could use words like terrible, awful, dismal or poor. For example, the movie was a terrible experience with poor acting and a confusing plot. Or the food was awful, tasting bland and unappetizing. Or I had a dismal time as everything seemed to go wrong. Next one, big. Instead of big, you could use words like massive, enormous, gigantic gigantic or colossal. Example, the elephant was enormous, standing tall and majestic in the wild. Or the skyscraper was massive, reaching high into the sky, dominating the city skyline. Next, small. Instead of small, you could use words like tiny, minute, miniature or diminutive. Example, the ladybug was tiny with vibrant red and black spots. Or, the dollhouse was a miniature, intricately designed with tiny furniture and decorations. Next, nice. Instead of nice, you could use words like pleasant, enjoyable, delightful or satisfying. Example, the meal was satisfying with a perfect blend of flavors and textures. Or, the beach was pleasant with soft sand and the soothing sound of waves crashing against the shore. Interesting. Instead of interesting, you could use words like engaging, captivating, intriguing or fascinating. Example, the book was fascinating kept me engrossed until the very last page. Or, the documentary was intriguing, shedding light on a topic I had never explored before. Next, happy. Instead of happy, you could use words like elated, joyful, ecstatic or jubilant. Example, she was ecstatic when she got the college she had always dreamed of. Or, the children were jubilant, jumping up and down with joy as they opened their presents on Christmas morning. Sad. Instead of sad, you could use words like melancholy, gloomy, somber or sorrowful. Example, the funeral was a somber occasion. Or, the abandoned house had a melancholy atmosphere, as if it held memories of happier times. <sighs> tired. Instead of tired, you could use words like exhausted, fatigued, drained or spent. 
एग्जाम्पल आफ्टर द मैराथन ही वॉज कंप्लीटली एग्जॉस्टेड और द लॉन्ग डे एट वर्क लेफ्ट अ फीलिंग ड्रेन एंड इन नीड ऑफ रेस्ट एंग्री इंस्टेड ऑफ angry you could use words like furious irate livid or incensed example he was absolutely livid when he found out what happened or i was furious when i got to know about his behavior at the restaurant using alternative words can help you avoid repetition and add variety and interest to your writing now i've given you some examples of the words that i've stated for all the other words i need you to drop examples in the comments and whenever you need a nicer word for something you know you can look it up in a thesaurus so give me those examples and do subscribe for more i'll see you next time bye bye